Hey guys, today I want to give you an introduction to my dear friend, Apple Motion. If you watch my content just for the Final Cut tutorials, but you've been kind of hesitant to get into the Apple Motion world because you're a little bit intimidated by it, this is the video for you. I'm going to give you a very general introduction into Apple Motion. I'm going to show you what it's used for, what it can do, and what makes it different from other motion graphic apps. So here is a sampling of projects that were all created in Apple Motion. Some of them were for my business. Some of them are for my tutorials here on YouTube. As a Final Cut editor, one thing that's important for you to know about motion is that all of the titles and effects, transitions, and generators that you either got with your Final Cut app or that you bought from third-party plugins are most likely built in motion. And once you know motion, you can build your own transitions, effects, titles, and generators as well. And I'm not going to show you how to make all of these things today, but I am going to give you a great introduction and overview today if you've never delved into Apple Apple Motion before. And when you're really ready to get your hands into Apple Motion and really learn it, you should grab my course, Motion Launchpad. I'll link to it down below. You can find it at jenjager.com. It's been really well received, but you don't need to worry about that yet. Let's first just get you acquainted with Apple Motion. All right, so once you've purchased Apple Motion from the App Store, you can find it here in your apps. So this is the first window you're going to encounter, and it is called the Project Browser. Here you can choose whether you want to make a standard motion project, which is what we're going to be doing today. But remember when I said that all of the titles, generators, transitions, and effects are built in motion, you could choose to start one of those other projects as well. On the right side of the Project Browser is where you can set your project settings. So I'm going to set this one to 4K 24 frames per second, and you can set the duration of the project here, but you can change that duration once you open the project. I'm going to manually set this to 10 seconds long. All right, let's hit open. And here is your first look into Apple Motion. Let's just take a quick tour of the interface. So obviously this big window here is your canvas. This is like the viewer in Final Cut where you're gonna see your project come to life. At the bottom here is a timeline. So Motion has a timeline just like Final Cut does. This right here is your project pane. As we start to add elements to our project, you'll see them populate here and they work just like a layers pane, let's say in Photoshop or Pixelmator. On the left side of the screen is this big long window and it's got two tabs. The left tab is your library. The library is where all of your pre-built elements that you can use in your projects are housed. The next tab over is the inspector window. The inspector window is very similar to the inspector window in Final Cut. It's just on the opposite side of the screen. But as you can see, there's nothing in here yet because we haven't added anything to our project. So now would be a good time to do that. I'm going to head to the bottom of my canvas and this is where you can find your shape tools if you want to draw a shape freehand let's start with a rectangle and i'm going to draw a square by holding down my shift key and now a lot of things have happened in my screen i can see that my shape has populated my entire timeline here in the project pane i can see now i have a rectangle in my inspector window suddenly i have all these options here and if i want to change the way the square looks i'm going to navigate over to shape I'm going to enable fill, disable outline, and instead of having a solid color square, I'm going to add a gradient, and let's just make this a little bit more of a fun color. Okay, now what if I wanted to add some motion to this square? I could keyframe it just like you would in Final Cut. So if we head back over to the inspector window under properties, you can see this should look really familiar to you. If you're a Final Cut editor, you can make modifications to the position, rotation scale, anchor point, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna cute my playhead to the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to add a keyframe under position. I'm going to move my playhead a little bit further down in my timeline. And then I'm just going to modify the X value. And now when I play it back here, my square is zipping across the screen. All right, so that's one way to make motion in Apple Motion. But what makes motion unique is this thing called behaviors. So you can assign behaviors to your objects in motion to make them do some really fun stuff. Let me reset my position parameters here to get rid of those keyframes. I'm gonna grab my rectangle and bring it over to the left side of the screen again. And I wanna add a behavior to this square. So to do that, I'm gonna select it in my project pane, head on up to this button here at the top center of the motion UI called behaviors. We're gonna to go to basic motion and we're going to select motion path. And now look, my square is very slowly floating across the screen, almost exactly the same way as I did it with those keyframes. Now this is obviously happening really slowly. So if I wanted this to happen faster, you can see that now my motion path 
behavior is represented in my timeline, I can just grab the end of this guy here and shrink him down. And now that action's gonna happen a lot faster. Now, I know what you're thinking, BFD, right? Like it was just as easy to apply the keyframes to create that motion as it was to apply that motion path behavior. Yeah, I know, but that's because the motion path is a pretty simple behavior. But what if you wanted to do something way more complex? Let me show you. I'm going to delete that motion path behavior. I can select it here in my project pane and just hit the delete key to get rid of it. What if we wanted this square to ping pong back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across my canvas? If I wanted to keyframe that, that would be a lot of keyframing. But with the behavior, I can achieve it super easily. Again, I'm on the rectangle. I'm going to head on up to behaviors. We're going to go to parameter and we're going to select the oscillate parameter. So now you can see that the oscillate behavior is now in my timeline, but nothing's happening when I run my playhead. Why is that? We need to set which parameter we want to apply the oscillate behavior to. So in the inspector window, you're going to see this line down here that says apply to. Let's just go to properties, transform, position, and X. So now I can see that the square is kind of oscillating left to right, left to right, kind of slow and not very far. We can modify the properties of this behavior to get more of the look that we were looking for. So I'm going to increase the amplitude. Now you can see that my square is oscillating at a much greater distance. I can grab that square and reposition it so that the movement is now centered. And if I wanted to go faster, I can just increase the speed. Think about once you would keyframe something, if you wanted to go back and change the speed of it, what a nightmare that would be. That is why behaviors are so amazing in Apple Motion and that's really what makes Apple Motion stand out from let's say trying to do this in Final Cut. Now watch this, I'm going to select that oscillate behavior here in my project pane and I'm going to duplicate it. And then here in my inspector, you can see I have an oscillate copy. Let's change the parameter that we're oscillating. What if we drop down here and went from properties to transform to rotation to Z. And now my square is oscillating back and forth and oscillating around. I'm gonna decrease the amplitude on that rotation. Now we've created this really nice motion without having to use keyframes but you can even apply more behaviors, different behaviors still to the same object in motion. Let's do that. I'm going to, again, select my rectangle here. Let's go up to behaviors. We're gonna go down to simulations now, and I'm going to select gravity. Now you've probably figured out already that this red line shows my animation path. Look at what the gravity behavior has done. It's making the square drift down the screen as it oscillates back and forth and around on the Z axis. And if I want it to go faster, I can just crank up the gravity acceleration and now it's falling even faster. All right, so this square is definitely a great example of how you can use behaviors to create motion in Apple Motion, but let's do something a little bit more practical. Let's work on some text. So I'm going to delete this rectangle out of my project pane. Let's grab the text tool here at the bottom of my canvas. And I'm just gonna type in some quick text here. And once I've added text in my inspector window, this probably looks super familiar to you. It's the same adjustments you can make in Final Cut. And you can apply many of the same behaviors to text in Apple Motion as you can with other objects, but text in Apple Motion does have its own set of behaviors. So let's dive into those. I'm going to make sure I'm selected on my text in my project pane, head on up to behaviors, and you can see this whole category of text animations. Let's go to text energetic and select bounce in. And let's just look at what that looks like by default. All of the words are bouncing in in unison. Now, if I head over to my inspector window and open up the rest of these options here, you can see that I have a lot of customization I can do with this text. For instance, under the animate line, it is set to all. But if I change that and set it to word, now each word is coming in on its own. And if I increase the spread, I get a more fun, bouncy look. And just like we applied multiple behaviors to the square, I can apply multiple behaviors to text. Let's do that. I'm gonna select this text again in my project pane, head on up to behaviors. This time, let's go to text highlighter, and I'm going to select the pirouette behavior. And you can see the pirouette behavior now is in my timeline, and by default, that is what those two effects stack together look like. Now I can reposition my pirouette behavior so that the spin happens a little bit later. I can tighten it up so it all happens a little faster. And just like with the spread on the bounce in, I can increase the spread 
And so more letters are twirling at once. Now we've officially made a one of a kind text animation in motion. What if we wanted to bring this into Final Cut? So easy, let me show you how to do that. We're gonna need to convert this project into a text project. We're gonna head up to File, Convert Project To, and we're going to select Title because this is a title. Under Title Source, let's create a new placeholder and hit Convert. Now we've got a title background if we wanted one. I'm going to leave that unmodified at this point. Let's head on up to File again and hit Save As. And it's gonna ask me some questions here. What do we wanna call this? I'm gonna call this Bounce and Spin since that's pretty much what this title is doing. Under Category, this is the folder it's going to be in when you open it in Final Cut in your titles sidebar. I already have a category called Jen's Titles where I'm gonna put this, but if you wanted to make a new category, you would navigate all the way to the bottom of this list and create a new category. And then the theme would be like the subcategory within your titles. I'm just going to leave that as none. I'm going to select Publish. And now when we open Final Cut, let's navigate over to Jen's Titles. And there is our title, Bounce and Spin, remember? I'm gonna drop this into a new project. I'm gonna be really lazy and not title it here. And you can see there is our title. If I select this title in my timeline and head over to the title inspector, I have no published parameters. I can change the font in the text inspector. I can make all those normal adjustments, but I can't make any adjustments to the motion of this text. So I'm gonna head back over to motion and let's do what's called publishing parameters. This is where you set what you can customize over in Final Cut. So let's make sure we're selected on the title in our motion project, head on over to behaviors, and let's make some decisions about what we wanna be able to adjust in Final Cut. Let's start with the bounce in. I would like to be able to change the animate line. Remember we went from all to word. So I'm gonna hit this disclosure button here and I'm going to select publish. I'm also going to publish the spread. Under pirouette, let's publish the direction and let's publish the speed. And one other thing I'd like to do is add a blur effect to this title background because sometimes when you overlay text over live action video, you wish you could really blur out the background because the text doesn't pop as much. So what I'm going to do is select this title background and I'm going to head on up to filters and let's apply a blur to this. Now I'm going to publish the amount of the blur. So now we can control how blurred the background is underneath our text. Now I'm going to hit Command S to save this. We're gonna jump back over to Final Cut. And now to see the changes we made, I need to clear out that old text in our timeline, drop in a new text. And now when I select it and head over to the title inspector, you can see all of the options we now have with our title. I'm just gonna drop a B-roll shot underneath this text so we can see the results of that blur effect we put on here. So I can choose to blur out the shot underneath my text or I can dial down to zero and it can be not blurry at all. So now you can see the appeal of adding motion skills to your Final Cut editing. Let's head back over to Motion for a couple other things I wanna show you. Motion supports a lot of different file types. You can drop video here into Motion. You can also drop in 3D objects that are USDZ files. You can purchase these USDZ files from third-party sites like Sketchfab. I will link to that one below. Motion also has a camera feature which allows you to create 3D looks like this one, and it even has a motion tracking feature just like you get in Final Cut. So I hope this kind of helped you understand what Apple Motion is, what it's used for, why you might want to add it to your toolbox. If you're a Final Cut editor, if you really want to learn it, check out Motion Launchpad, of course. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I know you're going to love. Welcome to the world of Apple Motion, and I'll see you again.